Hello everyone, I'm about to show you five patents from the top AI startup companies in the world, all of whom have raised about a billion dollars or more. These are all patents that just issued, and you're going to be amazed at the protection these companies were able to obtain by thinking outside the box. And then I'm going to show you how you can do the same thing. By way of quick introduction, my name is Gerson Panich. I'm a partner at Finnegan, one of the world's largest and top-ranked intellectual property specialty firms. We have about 800 employees and 10 offices around the world. In addition to litigating patent disputes in U.S. courts, I spend a lot of my time working with companies to develop strategic patents designed to withstand the rigors of courtroom challenge and to block competitors. I teach these principles in graduate level university courses, and I lead Finnegan's Strategic Patent Planning Group, where we help our clients apply these very principles to their businesses. My methodology in preparing this presentation was to find a list of the top funded AI companies in the world. I had a hypothesis, which was that if they're raising a lot of money, they're probably doing a great job at getting their patents. So I set out to test that hypothesis by looking at the patents of these top companies. So let's start by taking a look at a patent from the number one ranked AI startup company in terms of funding. This is SenseTime from Beijing. It was founded in 2014, and so far it has raised $3.3 billion. What was the problem that SenseTime was trying to solve with this patent? The problem was that facial recognition can be hacked using photographs. Are you looking at a real person's face or are you looking at a photograph of a person's face? Very simply, the scope of protection that SenseTime received is as follows. Detect the person with both an image sensor and a depth sensor. Align the data from both sensors to find key points and run it through a neural network to determine if it represents a living body. Does the patent require any particular type of algorithm? No, it just conceptually says use a neural network. It's so broad that presumably anyone who uses image data and depth data in a neural network to determine the presence of a living being would infringe the patent. Let's look at another patent. This one is from Megvi, also from Beijing. Megvi was founded in 2011 and so far has raised $1.4 billion. Now, the problem that Megvi addressed with this patent is false positives in object detection. As the patent explains, things like image angle, lighting, and distance can make it difficult to detect if portions of an image are actually part of the target. So Megvi patented the idea of merging the outputs of two neural networks, one with layers of image data and the other with even more layers of heat map data. They defined heat map data as indicating the probability that each pixel dot belongs to the target. Then they merge those two together and that's their patent. What is remarkable about this patent is that it omits all the details of the neural network algorithms. They're described, but they're not in the claims of the patent. There's no requirement in the claims that the algorithm has to work in any particular way. The claims are just conceptual. So presumably, anyone who applies heat map, map outputs with image outputs to increase target recognition would infringe this patent. Let's look at this third example. You are going to love this patent. This one is from Neuro of Mountain View, California. Neuro was founded in 2016 and has so far raised $1 billion. This patent solves the problem of people having to drive or take a cab to a rental center to pick up a rental car. The patent claims a dual mode vehicle. The car drives itself to the customer's location in a first autonomous mode. And then when the customer gets in, the car switches to a manual mode and lets the car drive manually. And then when the rental period ends, the vehicle reverts to its autonomous mode. Remarkably, there is a complete lack of technical detail in the definition of the invention, what we call the patent claims. Any rental company that autonomously sends a vehicle to a customer 
would likely infringe this patent. You're also going to love this patent to Zooks, located in Foster City, California. Zooks was founded in 2014 and so far has raised $995 million. The problem that Zooks solved with this patent is that sometimes an autonomous vehicle traveling along a defined trajectory may encounter an unexpected obstruction. So what is Zook's patented solution? Create two trajectories, a primary trajectory and a contingent trajectory. And if the primary trajectory is impaired, send the vehicle along the contingent trajectory. Again, the patent is conceptual. We know that it is using AI, but it doesn't even claim AI. Anyone who prepares an alternate trajectory for a vehicle would presumably infringe regardless of how they did it. And finally, here's the last one for you today. It's from Samsara, a San Francisco-based company founded in 2015 who has so far raised $930 million. What's the problem that Samsara was solving with this patent? Configuring industrial controllers is time consuming and gathering data from them tends to lag real time. So what did Samsara patent? Securely configure a controller via a remote web server. And in the process, receive specifications for at least one input or output port and gather data that's stored locally and then transmit that data back to the server for analysis. That's it. That's all they patented. The claim is so broad that it might be interpreted to cover anyone who remotely configures industrial controllers and captures data in the process. Again, there is no specific algorithm that is claimed here. It's all conceptual. What can we learn from these examples? Investors love patents like these. Why? Because they give a company value by limiting competition. Every time you get a patent like these, your competitors will sit around their conference tables and say, what are we going to do? Actually, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to yell and scream that you should have never gotten the patent in the first place. That's what everybody does. But after they get over that, they're going to say to themselves, we have to tell our investors about this patent. And they're going to be reluctant to make an investment if they think that there's a risk of an infringement suit. Now, I have to tell you, most patents do not have the potential of the patents that I just showed you. 95 to 97% of patents, according to most analysts, are worthless. Why? Because most are not strategically developed to achieve a blocking position. Most patents have extra stuff in them that a competitor, a competitor can look at and say, I don't need to do it that way, I'll do it a different way. If I could take a poll of this group and ask you to answer honestly with a show of hands, as I do when I'm teaching in an auditorium, most of you would admit that you would never have thought that the patents I just showed you were patented. Most of you would admit that you would not have run to your patent attorney and said, claim the invention as broadly as you just saw it claimed in those patents. You would likely have instead described all the technical nuances to your patent attorney and your patent attorney would have dutifully followed your instructions. Your patent attorney would have defined your invention in highly technical terms, resulting in a technical patent that would be easy for your competitors to circumvent. So lesson number one is that if you want great patents, you need to avoid technical patents in favor of conceptual patents. None of the patents that we discussed included overly technical details in the claims. Most of them claimed artificial intelligence without even claiming any artificial intelligence algorithms or without even mentioning artificial intelligence. And if they claimed such algorithms, competitors would most likely look at the patent and say, I can find a way to avoid these technicalities. By focusing your claims on the broader concepts, you are more likely to create patent value. Lesson number two, which flows from lesson number one, is that if you want strategic patents, you cannot let the techies in your company define what the invention is. Because they will, by their nature, define those inventions technically. You shouldn't dictate to your patent attorney what should be patented. 
Rather, you should work with a patent strategist who can understand the importance of your invention in context and who will then define your invention for you in a way that will block competitors and will achieve your business goals. Unfortunately, many companies don't work with a patent strategist and they end up patenting what the techies think is cool rather than what is most important for protecting the business. Number three, which flows from the first two, avoid complexity. Look, I'm a trial attorney. The last thing I want to do is explain to a judge or a jury how this complicated patent claim is infringed. Work with someone who enforces patents so that your claims don't simply pass the test to get a patent from the patent office, but they pass the test to withstand later attacks in court. Even if you don't plan to sue anyone for infringement, a competitor will only be scared of your patent if they believe that it will stand up in court. Lesson number four, which flows from lessons one through three, is that you have to integrate patent strategy into your business model. You know, there was a survey done in 2015 that showed that over 80% of the S&P 500's value is derived from intangible assets. Not your buildings and your computers and your, and your hardware, but what's up here? And business executives need to realize that that's where the value is coming from and give more attention to the IP. It should be addressed and fully understood in your business meetings. In advance of filing patent applications, you should figure out how your prospective patents are going to give you a measurable commercial advantage. And if the answer is it won't give us that advantage, or we're not sure if it will give us that advantage, then don't waste your money on that patent. Lesson number five, you've got to be creative with your patent. The patents I showed you were recently granted. There's a big, wide, open field out there of inventions that you can protect. But most companies can't see the potential because they harbor misconceptions about what's patentable. You need to allow a patent strategist to push you outside the box. And if you do, I guarantee you that you will be pleasantly surprised at what you're able to achieve. Listen, there are so many additional lessons that we could draw but my time is running low. If you want to capture my contact information, you can Google me at Panich, Panich, at Finnegan, or you can click Alt Print Screen to capture my contact details right now, paste it, and call me at your convenience. Either way, I love this topic and I would be happy to have a friendly conversation with you about it. So I'm wishing you the best of luck developing strategic paths to block competitors and increase your investor value.